Okay, if you want to know where this uh, video is going to appear, I'm going to put it. Uh, I haven't even told you about this stupid video, but it's going to be a video on financing and the corporate model. It's going to look extremely basic, and we'll put it in this one, which is the building corporate model from A to Z, and it will be the model, corporate model with the target capital structure. Uh, where we left off last video was a very simple cash balance, and we just put the cash balance up here in the financing section, and when we put the cash balance in the financing section, after I made some idiotic uh, mistakes, our balance sheet bounced, and we were satisfied, and we were happy. Okay, and we had done a little bit of advanced things to figure out what the historic growth was and what the retirements are, and we split up the existing and the projected depreciation expense. So even though it was a looks a highly simple model. Uh, it, it had some sophisticated depreciation. Now I'm in a coffee shop because I got kicked out of my house for my making videos, and uh, uh, I am uh, going to now, uh, as I told you, we're going to work with the debt, and we're going to work with the minimum cash balance, and if I have time. We'll put in a circular reference, I, I think, or we'll, we'll work on a circular reference. Okay, so down here, the first thing is our debt balance was just very simplistically uh, computed. And okay, let's just add a few lines. Let's make this the closing debt balance. Uh, closing. Okay, whatever. And let's put the that balance here, and put an opening balance, and add the new debt issue, let's subtract the debt repaid, and for the closing debt balance, okay, and uh, opening balance to closing balance, and now we modify this one, and instead of just taking the last one, which we did before, we take the opening balance, plus the debt issued, minus the debt repaid. Shift control R, shift control R, and we're going to also make an interest Expense, and let's make it 5%. Let's put the average. And I hope you understand the kind of philosophy of taking the average. That means that uh, all the cash flow occurs in the middle of the year. It's not saying really that, you know, that whatever. Necessarily, the debts we pay or whatever, but really everything happens. In the that's what, the, that's what the, this has. And you know, when we do the cash balance, we should put add about the surplus cash, and then let's put this. Our balance sheet still balances. Okay, well, 
we haven't linked any of these. Okay, so if you don't, never link something, your balance sheet isn't going to test it very well, is it? Now, what we can do here is we can do this about a zillion different ways. But on this, I'm going to call this net cash flow. And then we'll kind of split up how much cash is used and how much is uh, gained. So we can put add cash used with negative less debt repaid now notice that this is they're both the reductions so it's kind of like you start here with the reductions not the not the uh, uh, positives okay and to, this is a standard kind of cash flow waterfall you do one thing with this on is positive okay and do this you put if it's negative you put a minus sign on it that just says let's switch it from a minus to a plus so this is going to be zero because the bigger of minus 90 or zero is zero okay and then the debt repaid is the maximum of the positives okay and then we can have a cash cash flow subtotal Okay, and uh, we'll just take this one, and it says to add it, so we add it. It says to subtract it, so we subtract it. Okay, and it looks like we're just repaying the debt. Now, here's the little bit of a problem with this, is, is then we have to link this. Now, this uh, new cash flow can be our, our cash flow subtotal, okay, for, for a minute. We're just going to have to change that. Okay. The cash used, if it's a deficit, we take this from the cash flow statement. So it's kind of this big wheel that you uh, take these from, from downstairs. Okay. So far, that doesn't. Now, the new debt issue, we don't have anything yet. And the debt we paid is this one. Okay. Now, the problem here is that went to P0. So we have to implement our minimums and maximums. And this one, so we just say, well, we never really pay it because it's more than the, the maximum. Okay. So we uh, do this one. Okay. And then we have a bigger uh, cash flow subtotal. And let's stop here just for a minute. The really good news is our balance sheet still balances. Okay? And just to review the key principles of, of making a corporate finance model on these on these things, it's it's uh, number one, the the uh, uh, I don't really have to put those kind of double underlines, I would get killed. In 1982, I worked for an accountant, and I never got the rule of underlines right, and I always got in big trouble for that. Okay, we haven't put any interest income or entry any interest expense in there. Now, um, uh, okay, I. I uh, Let's make this just a little more interesting. Okay, and let's say we have a really big capital expenditure program. So we have 400 of CapEx here and 500 here. We know we're going to have negative cash flows. <sighs> and so we, oops. I guess uh, we should have kind of been a little more careful with when we put these in. We have some negative earnings. Hmm. We better keep the earnings positive, kind of after we've done this. But uh, 
we've used up all our debt. Hang on, we've used up all our cash. And, oh shit, hang on just a minute. We, uh, I haven't put the minus in for this one. So I have a feeling some problem. Okay, so. That's what I wanted to happen. I thought I'd put a, a, a maximum in there. So let's put the uh, two in here and then maybe we can uh, increase this to two. Okay, so we get some money at the expense of CapEx. That's why we do it. Okay. And, uh, we used all of our cash flow, and we got some cash flow. Um, we had a negative uh, cash balance, and that's the count off. Okay, so let's fix that one first. And the first fix on this one is just, on this one I should have also put a minimum, but this is where it's going to get a little more tricky because with the cash balance, let's first put a minimum cash balance and let's use a 2% uh, kind of assumption, 2% of revenues. So we'll just take the, or 2% of every drop, because probably a little bit more, 5% of every drop. Uh, uh, and I don't know where that 5% comes from. You can kind of think about how much cash you have to have in your cash registers. Uh, and I don't know. You could think about it a little bit. 2% would be... 8% would be a month's cash. So you need less than that, I guess. 2%. What is, what is 1 divided by 365? I should know that. That's, uh, that's about 0.2%, so 2% is, um, is this, so seven days of cash, I don't think. Okay. So we'll put, this is again an editor, put this, okay, that's how much cash balance we have now. Here's the problem. Um, we, uh, our cash balance went down to a minus number, that kind of thing, right? And we'd want to make it, make sure that it's never below, uh, 1150. So we need a minimum, uh, test. Now, what that means is it could be, if this minimum test is bigger than this, so it's the minimum, I, it's not quite the minimum of this or the opening up. Let's try that. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, just, uh, I have to think about this. But, you know, just, now I keep getting this wrong. But if we put the maximum of either this or this <coughs> minus the amount of uh, cash flow we have to take away, uh, then we get kind of a test. And this test should not cause a circular reference because this is kind of before the, the thing. Well, I'm wrong, I think, about that. Shit. Let's try it. I'm not sure. Okay. Just a minute. Fucking line. Okay, I really hate this minimum cash balance thing, but here's what I did. First, I uh, finished this thing up. So if we have some extra cash flow, if it's negative, 
we have to add debt, so we just put the maximum of the minus of those of zero in the debt. If it's longer than cash flow, we put max of this or zero. Okay, so that's what we do for here. Now, if we want the, the minimum cash balance, what we can do is simply take a cut, which is the opening balance minus this. So that's the most we could ever use. Now, if, if it's negative, that's okay. Because you notice we have to add some here. And if you use that in the, in the minimum function, uh, then the ending get balance comes just, just right. Okay? And uh, I have to add the debt issue to me. And the balance sheet still balances. So you notice the, a couple of principles. And I'm stopping this video now. Go First, the, uh, the, uh, get the balance sheet balanced to start with. Get it balanced and then add one, one by one. Uh, Put it, use the minimum and maximum functions in a kind of cash flow waterfall here. Uh, you don't have to. You could do a few other things to show you how to do it. Actually, a simpler method. If you're going to use the minimum, uh, just take, first compute the minimum and take the opening balance. It's always start with the opening balance and subtract the minimum test to see how much you have. Now, up here, when we have a whole bunch of extra cash and this minimum test doesn't really come into play because we have so much extra cash. We only uh, use that minimum cash when it's negative cash flow. So I believe that method works. So let's just review that one more time. So for the minimum test, just uh, take the opening balance minus the, the minimum cash balance. Now what we haven't done yet is put our interest income rate, I just press shift control C, and we haven't put our, our debt rate, debt rate, so we haven't put these in there, and that's going to cause some circular references, because I use the averages, and that's going to be our next uh, video. Okay, I'm going to stop.